Hello and welcome to P Guru's channel. This is your host Sri Ayer. Today I have the privilege of having a conversation with Dr. Subramanian Swami, member of Rajya Sabha. Uh, Dr. Swami, welcome to P Guru's channel. Thank you. Um, viewers, today we are going to discuss a little bit about uh, the history of economics and to place it in the right context. Dr. Swami, I'd like to uh, allude to one of the governors of RBI. Uh, this person on his resume had a degree in uh, engineering from IIT, then an MBA from IIM, then went on to get a PhD in finance um, and, <coughs> and, 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 and I was teaching in a sc school in, uh, in United, United States and, and that was said as that was enough qualifications to be the governor of RBI and, and you were one of the few individuals who probably pointed out that uh, this is really not the qualifications you need yeah. to be the governor of uh, RBI. Yeah. And I think you were coming at it from a person's knowledge of economics. Yeah. So for our viewers, why did you uh, yeah. say that? And then maybe we can go yeah. on from there. Well, first of all, before I get into the policy prescriptions of uh, Mr. Raghuram Rajan, mm. you're talking about. Mm. Uh, there is a fundamental difference between macroeconomics and microeconomics. Mm. The chartered accountants, uh, the MBA students, finance, mm. they are all in working in the field of microeconomics. Mm. Economists uh, not only know microeconomics, but they also know macroeconomics. macroeconomics. Now the difference between the two is that microeconomics is bilateral, mm. consumers, producers, mm. buyers, sellers, mm. uh, losers, winners, mm. Mm. Uh, profit, loss, mm. that sort of thing. And uh, that uh, is therefore basically on individual transactional level. Mm. When it comes to macroeconomics, you are dealing with the system. Mm. And the ma economy is a macroeconomic system. Mm. And it's an equilibrium like the universe is mm. because of mutual gravity. Mm. Mm. So a policy uh, move mm. in microeconomics might seem obvious mm. and common sense. But when it's applied in a macroeconomic network, it doesn't move the same way. Mm. For example, mm. In the case of Mr. Raghuram Rajan, mm. he said that he was going to control inflation by raising interest rates which will contract the money supply mm. Mm. and therefore it will reduce prices. Mm. Mm. This was his argument. Uh, my argument was that if you raise interest rates, then the cost of capital for the small and medium industries will mm. go up mm. and they rely totally on the Indian uh, finance market mm. for loans and they will cut back their production which will mean that uh, maybe prices will come down mm. but it will be like a dead man mm. whose temperature comes down. Comes down, right. It's, right. Not, a, right. it's not a phenomenon that we would welcome. Mm. So in our country he may have controlled inflation but it was at a heavy cost mm. of a large number of small and medium industries going out of business, mm. unemployment. So the control of inflation was accompanied by in, in, uh, unemployment. In other words, it was not control of inflation, it was actually inducing depression in the Indian economy. I see, I see, so it, okay. okay. Mm -hmm. Now this mistake is something that Mr. Raghunam Rajan Fiyar, even the modicum of uh, elementary knowledge of economics mm. would not have mm. committed. So now you see, uh, in the United States, in 1925, the U.S. president called all the top economists mm. and he said he was unhappy with the state of unemployment in the mm. uh, country. Mm. So is there any way we could uh, reduce the unemployment? Mm. Mm. So at that time, the concept of microeconomics, which really essentially flowered after John Maynard Keynes came to the mm. picture mm. And, uh, and as a cure for depression. Mm. Of which America, so it was a horrible depression, the whole world, right, Western right. world was in it. Right. Uh, there the, these, new, uh, these classical economists mm. use this uh, bilateral economics. I see, micro. I see, microeconomics. And mm. said that if you lower the wage rates, mm. 
then unemployment will come down mm. and employment will grow. Mm -hmm. They were thinking that there is a pool of money. If you lower the wages, there's more going around to add more people. Was there? Uh, the no, no. Then the capitalists would uh, find it cheaper to uh, uh, to hire. Okay, okay. So mm. therefore, unemployment mm -hmm. will lessen and employment mm. will increase. Now, what happened is the opposite happened. Mm. Um, uh, the president of the United States persuaded labor unions to accept mm. a wage cut, mm. and for lo and behold, unemployment decreased. Mm. The reason was that the purchasing power. Mm. Went down. Went down right. because of a wage cut. Mm. And therefore, industries had to uh, suffer a recession, mm, mm. which led to further uh, you know, uh, unemployment because they started mm. throwing out people from their right, employment. Right. And uh, therefore, a uh, cut in wages actually led to an greater un unemployment in the economy. <laughs> just exact opposite to the bilateral understanding. Mm, mm, mm. That you are likely to hire more people if you have lower wages. Right, right. But right. that's bilateral. Mm. So this is the fundamental difference. Mm. So the economy has now become a highly sophisticated general equilibrium model. Mm, mm. And uh, one thing can trigger something else. Mm. This is subprime loans. Right. It just happened that the small recession, mm. uh, just like a ricochet effect, mm. You know, just uh, the whole uh, Western world was in right, crisis. Right, right. Uh, in now, fact I, I think that uh, there are only two explanations for this idiocy of mm. uh, Mr. Raghuram Rajan. Mm. And he wasn't willing to listen because mm. he's in such a hubris. Mm. Mm. Uh, he, uh, because the society ladies were all going woo ah about mm. his lovely uh, uh, tie <laughs> and uh, I mean they're only economics right. but he was getting carried away he was addressing them they were turning up in large numbers mm. uh, of the uh, relative to their population of right, that, uh, right. elite crowd and uh, he, he became arrogant mm. and it's not that he wasn't told that this is not correct economics mm. but there was nobody else to tell in our government Mr. Jetley doesn't know any economics mm. um, uh, what he knows could be fit, fit in the backside of a postage stamp. Mm. So, uh, <laughs> so there was no one to correct him. Mm. And uh, then I, therefore I had to move in the matter mm. and say you can't lower interest rates. Right. Cost of capital can be so high. In the United States you can get a loan for 2% interest. Right, right, right. And then uh, uh, there you can raise from 2, two, two to 3%. Percent. It's not such a big th deal. Right, right, right. But in India it's already uh, prime lending rate was 12% and mm. the market rate was going at 18% and mm, informal mm, it was 25% mm. and these are all uh, you know people living on the margins mm, mm. and they were all getting unemployed mm. and it was an anti-national move. But I feel personally that uh, Mr. Raghuram Rajan even if he had, he had come to realize what I said mm. he couldn't do it because he seemed, seemed to have come with an agenda. Mm, mm, mm. Because he soon uh, branched into the question of intolerance and uh, right, right, and right, so right, 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 right. And of course, he was very corrupt because his brother uh, in Tatas and he and uh, other. Uh, I don't want to get into it because mm. I told the prime minister, mm. if you don't sack him, mm. then I'll have to go into this. Mm. What he's done with small media, small banks, creation mm. of small banks, a lot, lots of corruption. Mm, mm. So I, uh, fortunately, the prime minister decided to get rid of him. Mm. Although, till today, when he himself admitted there was nothing on the table, so he had to leave. Right, right, right. The, all these society ladies were going, ooh, ah, how he rejected uh, <laughs> the offer to continue. Yeah, these are all uh, massaging uh, of yeah, the, the message. Yeah, the media <laughs> swallowed it. I mean, they, yeah. they, they, especially our English media, they are all st stooge media. Right, right. It's, it's very uh, unfortunate. Yeah. See. But he came with an agenda, which I think the American... Well, well, had given so some people had said that by keeping the interest rates high in India, he was creating an environment for people to do arbitrage yes, in the right. interest that's rate a, differential. Yeah, that's, that's another follow -up. Right. I mentioned that also to the Prime Minister. Mm. That's now very profitable for somebody from America to come here, take a loan. Right, 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 huh? right. And... Um, uh, you know, uh, I mean, take a loan from America for 2%. Two per it was 0.25% in oh, fact, yes, it was so low, I, yeah. Point oh, yes, it had fallen that bad. And come here and uh, loan and let yeah. it out uh, right. informally. Right, right, right. Because it was going on. Right. Especially they were giving to the uh, uh, the big industries. Mm. They were giving mm. informal loans. Mm. Mm. Uh, or in the name of FDI. 
right uh, so or participatory notes participatory notes uh, uh. Um, sir let's uh, step take a step back in terms of the evolution of economics uh, early in the 20th century up until that time economics is considered more of an art rather than a science yeah. form Shakespeare. <laughs> Shakespeare in English. Yeah, Shakespeare in English. Mm -hmm. And so, at some point, this this thing changed. And I think you have attributed Professor Samuel San as yes. one of those people who actually created an econo a mathematical model that could actually predict how economics happens at a, yeah. at a large level. Yeah. So, maybe for our viewers, you can just take us through the last 100 years of the yeah. economics evolution. You see, the mathematicalization of economics was in sporadic form mm. earlier. Mm. There was Slutsky equation, there was uh, a smattering of it in uh, John Hicks mm. um, in Oxford. Um, it was here and there, Walras's general equilibrium system, mm. Mm. Uh, Kaleski. So uh, there were people, but they were all. Uh, what Samuelson did, mm. I mean, he was truly a genius. Mm. I have a great privilege that I was his co-author and uh, mm. in a paper and uh, I was a student and we had a long-term association which lasted till he mm. uh, passed away. Uh, he was a true genius. Now, what he did was, he did two things with mathematics. Mm. First is, he was able to explain phenomenon which you couldn't explain by graph. Mm. For example, mm. uh, in the in the mythological, I would say, because we have not been able to establish if this really happened or not. Mm. In the mythological Irish famine, mm. the price of potatoes shot up, mm. but the consumption of potatoes also shot up. <laughs> How to explain that? <laughs> How to explain it graphically? Right. Because you have a demand curve which goes like that. Mm, mm, mm. Now all of a sudden you can't make a demand curve go up mm. and it made no sense. Right, right. But he, uh, uh, b borrowing on the earlier work in its uh, infant form, Chamberlain um, uh, did two things. One is that he showed by calculus. Mm that when prices rise, mm. there are two components. Mm. One is what he called as the price effect mm. and the other he called as the income effect. Mm. And then uh, he converted that into uh, uh, into what is he called as comparative statics. I mm. mean, he is really <coughs> the father of comparative statics, mm. which means I got an equilibrium. Mm. And then I make a perturbation in it. Mm, mm. Disturbance, a small induce ah, a disturbance, yeah. right? Mm. Then, using differential calculus, mm. you get the. Uh, oh, equations. I see, I see. Mm. So he got these equations. Mm. This is first great contribution he made. Mm. It's comparative mm. statics, mm. Mm. and it requires a genius mind. I mean, it's not obvious. Mm. It's, uh, mm. 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 it's not lack of knowledge of mathematics or something. It's just the application. Mm. The second thing. Uh, he did was he says I am observing data. Mm. I observe market prices. I observe people buying, selling. Right. So if I get this observable data, mm. Mm. can I convert this in uh, what is uh, the engineers call as uh, you know when you uh, get the final product and then you go work backwards? It's called. Mm. Uh, uh, reverse engineering. Correct, reverse engineering. Right, right. Can right. I do a reverse engineering? I see, I see. And find out what is your maximum mm, mm, mm. or the utility function right. which you maximize. Right, right, right. Which right, we right. have a notional concept. Correct, correct, correct. Uh, earlier on, they had a notional concept that you maximize your satisfaction, mm. which is measured by a utility function, mm, mm. Uh, which is a multivariate function of all the commodities you buy. Right, right. And services right. you use. So he said, "No, I'm observing these data." Mm. And and this and in those days there wasn't much computers also going around. That's right. Everything had to be done manually yeah, using manually. slide rules and what uh, have you. <laughs> so he actually converted that into a equation form. Mm, mm. That if I today buy so much mm. at this price, mm. and I buy uh, more at less price. Mm, mm. 
then he worked out what is called as weak axioms of revealed preference. Oh, wow. Mm. So while you're buying and selling, these are all revealed preferences. Mm. Mm. So he developed this theory of revealed preference as a graduate student at Harvard. <laughs> 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 Incidentally, he also suffered like I have suffered, mm. but my, me for political reasons, but he, he was for his Jew. religious uh, reasons. Uh, right. <laughs> Jew. I couldn't get a job at Harvard. My God. <laughs> and afterwards, of course, when he became a genius, established genius, right. I would try to bring him. Uh, I, I won't come my <laughs> So he stayed with MIT. Uh, but he did come as visiting professor once <laughs> while. But um, the, this, you are observing this data. Mm. From this observable, can I work backwards? Correct. Correct. Mm. That's what really led to the use of set theory mm. Mm. and uh, matrix analysis mm. and this uh, economics flower. Right, right. So, um, so your association with him started in the 60s probably. When I landed in 1962 September, mm. I was a, admitted to this course um, for a PhD at Harvard. Mm. Um, now, uh, uh, Harvard PhD you get after qualifying in a general exam. Mm. There's a general qualifying exam. Mm. It's called a general exam, not a qualifying exam. Mm. Where about uh, four papers you write. I see. And show that you are fit for research. Mm. Mm. It's a tough exam. Right, right, right. right Most right. people take it after four years, I three see. years. I see. Uh, mm. uh, so you, you take that and at that time, you have to take, uh, you know, uh, while you are preparing for that exam, mm. you take courses, mm, normal mm, courses. Mm. So, I took a, I went to, uh, uh, before coming, I was already interested because I had demolished Mr. Malnobis by the right. of calculus. Right, <laughs> right. <laughs> I mean, he was, he was a giant, uh, you know, mm. he was favorite of Nehru, there's nothing. Planning like, Commission. Uh, he can't quash, squash, <laughs> the Planning Commission, Deputy Chairman, all that. Mm. And in one calculus equation where I uh, differentiated an integral mm. and I got the result to show that what Mr. Malnobis is passing off as a great new invention <laughs> was as nothing but Lorentz curve, mm, mm. which is 300 years old, <laughs> except that it was the de first derivative of the Lorentz curve. <laughs> okay, so I had, uh, uh, by then uh, you know it didn't matter whether I got a master's degree. I didn't get Harvard is already ready. Mm. Uh, I had a scholarship, uh, all paid for, everything, mm. and uh, people uh, the my. Uh, my uh, referee for my article was a uh, chairman of the admissions committee that mm. helped also. Uh, the uh, so um, uh, there was a planning commission member in, in uh, Sardarji called Tarlok Singh. Mm. He was also London school and all, but old style Shakespearean economics. Mm. Mm. But he was member, mm. great favorite of Nehru also. But he was my, my father's friend, so he took a great liking for me. Mm. Uh, my he recommended too, so it was confluence of uh, mm, mm. Uh, two things, scholarship mm. and you know somebody who has roots in India. Right. So when I landed there, uh, by then I had already read um, uh, Samuelson's uh, textbook, uh, which most people don't know about. Mm. They know about the what you learn in Economics 1. Right. There's a, it's a general uh, introduction to economics. Mm, it's, uh, mm. it's very engaging uh, English mm. and all that. Mm. But he has a mathematical thesis. Mm. I mean, that is his PhD thesis was converted into a book. Mm. Mm. And that's called Foundation of Economic Analysis. Mm. Mm. And that's all mathematical. Mm. So I had already, because I had a mathematics degree and I had a mathematical statistics degree. Mm. Mm. So I was equipped of all the uh, students mm. to read his. So I started um, mastering his thing. Mm. And uh, when I landed there, there was this ex elite course which mm. people took only in the third year or fourth year. I see. I wanted to take it in the very first semester. <laughs> uh, so I went to his office mm. and his secretary said, no, he can't see you. Mm. He's very busy. Mm. You're just the first year. Mm. You know, <laughs> you can't see him. Mm. All right. So I said, can I at least write him a note? Mm. So he, uh, she said, yes, you give me a note, I'll say, pass it on to him. Mm. So in that note, I wrote the revealed preference equations. Mm. And I suggested that uh, 
there was a problem what um, uh, he was saying about the integrity integrable integrability mm mm-hmm. but there something would be integrated Inde- integrated right, right because right. these were all uh, in uh, in infinitesimal changes mm, mm. Uh, price change a small amount right right right, uh, right. you know correct, correct, how, correct. how to integrate it back yes yes so there's a problem integrity so i wrote on it mm. i had uh, just reached uh, harvard back mm. from mit disappointed that you know <laughs> i couldn't take his course mm. i get a call from his mm. office mm. to the chairman mm. saying paul simonson wants to see mm. this boy mm. swami Mm-hmm. The chairman was mighty impressed. I mean, yeah. <laughs> so I mean, I said, "What do you do to him?" I mm-hmm. said, "I don't do anything." I said, "I want to take his course." He said, "Go right back." <laughs> so I cross-registered with him. That's my first association. Mm-hmm. The second thing which endeared me him, you know, unlike Indian climate, which would could, would have had an opposite effect. Mm. I was sitting in the class. He was writing all these equations in the advanced mathematical methods in economics. That mm-hmm. was the title mm-hmm. of the course, which. which I was thinking the first year everybody else was third year fourth year <laughs> about to take their phd mm. generals mm. and he wrote a equation where he made a mistake in the uh, conformability of matrices mm. Mm. so i told him um, interrupted him which he never liked mm-hmm. and said uh, professor samson you made a mistake mm. you will not get the results you are going for mm. I had a total silence in the class. <laughs> I can his, imagine. Uh, his, his back to me when he was writing. Right. Turned around and he said, "Who said that?" Hmm. So I said, "I said it." Hmm. So he walked up to me. Looked at me and said, "What did you say?" Hmm. I said, "You have made a mistake. Hmm. Which you have to correct, otherwise you won't get the result." Hmm. So he said, "Okay, go to the board and show me." <laughs> Baptism by fire. <laughs> so I went and looked, and said, "All right, class over today. Mm. There are only ten minutes left after that." But he said, "You come and see me in my office." <laughs> <laughs> so I had these classmates mm. telling me, "Have you got your ticket back to India?" <laughs> "You've blown it, Mister. <coughs> Should have come here in this play first mm. place in this class." Mm, mm. I went. I mean. <laughs> fear is not something I ever knew. Right, so right, I, right. I, I didn't go in fear or mm. trepidation. I went there and I went to his office. He suddenly looked at me and he said, "You know, I think you and I should work together." Hmm. What is your interests? So I told him that my interest is now because you have introduced me on this uh, reveal preference theory into index numbers. So I want to pursue that. Hmm. um my father was uh, himself a statistician mm-hmm. so i knew mm-hmm. these subjects so okay we start working mm-hmm. and that's how this famous paper came on oh, index we numbers solved, uh-huh, 300 year old problem mm-hmm. uh, so that was uh, and then you know it was this that he used to invite me for lunch and mm-hmm. you know uh, so, so, um, meeting him um he, uh, When I decided uh, to leave for India, he was not very unhappy. Mm. He said, "Let me tell you one thing." He didn't say Nobel Prize, but he mm. said, mm. "The way you're going, mm. you are probably one of my f- ten best students I've had." Mm. I can't say which part of the ten you are mm. because it might go to your head. <laughs> <laughs> Kept people grounded, <laughs> uh, but uh, you'll get a prize. Mm. You just write a treatise on index number theory, mm, mm. and I'm telling you, you'll be doing a great service to economics mm. and so on. So I'm going back to India. I said, No, you do this and then go. I said, No, uh, I'm up. the bug has bit me. I'm going back. Mm, mm. So I came back, mm. and he wrote me a very strong recommendation letter, mm. uh, which uh, went to uh, help me get the IIT. Mm. Professorship. Mm. Uh, mm. Manmohan Singh was the chairman mm. of the selection committee. Mm. There was they brought in an American scholar called Leonard Horwitz, mm. who began the selection committee meeting, saying, "What is there to select? Mm. I'll give my right arm to do a joint paper with Paul Samuelson. This man has already done it." <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that's how I got him. Mm. But uh, when the treatment, my uh, bad treatment started, mm. he and of course. My fatherly figure, who 
protected me mm. throughout. Mm. I mean, Samuelson was pure scholarship, mm, mm, mm. but the man who was like a father mm. who protected me from elements who didn't like me or mm. Marlowe's was able to influence mm. those who were coming to India mm. to do Indian studies. Mm. There were professors like that, World Banks. Mm, uh, mm. Blah, blah, blah. So that was Simon Kuznets. Kuznets. He was also a, a, a Nobel laureate and he was a very fatherly figure. Mm. And he looked after me, protected me and so on. I got all my appointments. Mm. I mean, the, the, there was no way anybody would block me mm. from mm. rising from assistant professor to associate professor mm. and about to become professor. Mm. That's the time I left. Mm. Uh, so the um, uh, uh, Simon Kuznets and uh, and uh, Samuelson both were Jews, mm. and they never spoke to me about is, uh, Israel or anything like that. But they were Jews, and you know, uh, I was there in the family functions, the dinner, lunches, mm, 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 mm. Hanukkah, this thing, that thing. Right, you know. right, right. So. Um, uh, it, they, they, I developed a certain fondness for the Israelis, I mean mm. the Jews at that time. Mm. And uh, when they came to know I was getting hell in India, mm. they said, come back, why is this country is ungrateful to you? Mm. We need, this is a country of immigrants. Mm. But I never went. Mm. In the emergency, both Simon Kuznets and, and uh, Samuelson, mm. They said you are right. Mm. I mean, after all, there can be anybody, in a, any number of people doing research. Mm. But to keep a country democratic, mm. this is good. So, after that, they never tried to persuade me to come I back. see. I see. Except they made me come every year mm. to, to take a one course. To two courses, one in China and the other is mm. mathematical economics. Mm. Mm. And uh, I did it till this controversy came that I should uh, buy these. Left wing loonies and Amartya Sens and so on, Sonia Gandhi financed uh, mm, intellectuals, mm. and that I should not uh, continue at Harvard because mm, mm. Uh, I mean they couldn't sack me, so they cut my courses. Correct, correct, <laughs> correct, correct, <laughs> correct, so correct, correct. That's how uh, it all ended. And meantime, he died also. Mm, 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 mm. I mean, Simon Kuznets died earlier, and then uh, uh, mm, Paul Samuelson. Uh, Paul Samuelson died, mm. uh, I think, uh, 2010. Mm. Mm. Great. Thank you, Doctor.